this is your reading of The Witches. This is chapter 10, Bruno Jenkins Disappears. Now, if you remember at the beginning of um, when the boy and his grandmother had gotten to the hotel, there was this really rude little boy named Bruno Jenkins, and he was complaining a lot, and he eats a lot, and he's very spoiled. So this chapter is about him. And then last week, to remind you, uh, the Grand High Witch was going through her plan to make delayed action mouse maker. And this was something that her and the witches are going to put into candy. And it turns kids into mice. But it takes a while. That's why it's called delayed. So that way they won't get caught. All right. <clears throat> the Grand High Witch was starting to talk again. I am now going to prove to you, she said, that this recipe is working to perfection. You understand, of course, that you can set the alarm clock to go off at any time you like. It does not have to be nine o'clock. So, yesterday I am personally preparing a small quantity of the magic formula in order to give you a public demonstration. But I am making one small change in the recipe. Before I am roasting the alarm clock, I am setting it off to go off not at nine o'clock the next morning, but half past three the next afternoon, which means half past three this afternoon. And that, she said, glancing at her wristwatch, is in precisely seven minutes. The audience of witches was listening intently, sensing that something dramatic was about to happen. So what am I doing yesterday with this magic liquid? asked the Grand High Witch. I will tell you what I am doing. I am putting one droplet of it into a very skishy chocolate bar, and I am giving this bar to a repulsive, smelly little boy who is hanging around the lobby of the hotel. The Grand High Witch paused. The audience remained silent, waiting for her to go on. I watched this repulsive little brute gobbling up the squishy bar of chocolate. And when he finished, I said to him, Was that good? He said, It was so great. So I said to him, Would you like some more? And he said, Yes. So I said, I will give you six more chocolate bars like that if you will meet me in the ballroom of this hotel at 25 past three tomorrow afternoon. Six bars, cried this greedy little swine. I'll be there. You bet I'll be there. So the stage is set, shouted the Grand High Witch. The proof of the pudding is about to begin. Do not forget that before I am roasting the alarm clock yesterday, I am setting it for half past three today. It is now. She glanced again at her watch. It is now exactly 25 minutes past three, and the nasty little stinker, who will be turning into a mouse in five minutes' time, should be at this very moment standing outside the doors. And by gum, she was absolutely right. The boy, whoever he might be, was already rattling the door handle and banging on the doors with his fist. Quick, shouted the Grand High Witch. Put on your wigs, put on your gloves, put on your shoes. There was a great rustle and bustle of putting on wigs and gloves and shoes, and I saw the Grand High Witch herself reach for her face mask and put it on over that revolting face of hers. It was astonishing how that mask transformed her. All of a sudden, she became once again a rather pretty young lady. Let me in, cried the boy's voice from behind the doors. Where are those chocolate bars you promised me? I'm here to collect. Dish them out. He was, he is not only smelly, he is also greedy, said the Grand High Witch. Remove the chains from the doors and let him come in. The extraordinary thing about the mask was that its lips moved quite naturally when she spoke. You really couldn't see it was a mask at all. One of the, wi the witches leapt to her feet and unfastened the chains. She opened the two huge doors. Then I heard her saying, 
Why, hello, little man. How lovely to see you. You have come for your chocolate bars, have you not? They are ready for you. You do come in. A small boy wearing a white t-shirt and gray shorts and gym shoes entered the room. I recognized him at once. He was called Bruno Jenkins, and he was staying in the hotel with his parents. I didn't care for him. He was one of those boys who was always eating something whenever you meet him. Meet him in the hotel lobby, and he is stuffing sponge cake into his mouth. Pass him in the corridor, and he is fishing potato chips out of a bag by the fistful. Catch sight of him in the hotel garden, and he is wolfing a dairy milk bar and has two more sticking out of his trouser pocket. What's more, Bruno never stopped boasting about how his father made more money than my father, and that they owned three cars, so boasting means bragging. Oh, yeah. Yesterday morning, I had found him kneeling on the flagstones of the hotel terrace with a magnifying glass in his hand. There was a column of ants marching across one of the flagstones, and Bruno Jenkins, was focusing the sun through his magnifying glass and roasting the ants one by one. I like to watch them burn, he said. That's horrible, I cried. Stop doing it. Let's see you try to stop me, he said. At that point, I had pushed him with all my might, and he had crashed sideways onto the flagstones. His magnifying glass had splintered into many pieces, and he leapt up shrieking, my father is going to get you for this. Then he had run off, presumably to find his wealthy dad. That was the last time I had seen Bruno Jenkins until now. I doubted very much that he was about to be turned into a mouse, although I must confess that I was secretly hoping it might happen. Either way, I wasn't envying him up there in front of all those witches. Darling boy, cooed the Grand High Witch from up on the platform. I have your chocolates all ready for you. Do come up here first and say hello to all these lovely ladies. Her voice was quite different now. It was soft and gentle and absolutely dripping with syrup. Bruno was looking a bit bewildered, but he allowed himself to be led up on the platform where he stood be beside the Grand High Witch and said, Okay, where are my six bars of chocolate? I saw the witch who had let him in quietly putting the chain back on the door handles. Bruno didn't notice this. He was too busy asking for his chocolate. The time is now one minute before half past three, announced the Grand High Witch. What the heck's going on? Bruno asked. He wasn't frightened, but he wasn't looking exactly comfortable either. What is this? He said. Give me my chocolate. Thirty seconds to go, cried the Grand High Witch, gripping Bruno by the arm. Bruno shook himself clear and stared at her. She stared back at him, smiling with the lips of her mask. Every witch in the audience was staring at Bruno. Twenty-one seconds, cried the Grand High Witch. Gimme the chocolate, shouted Bruno, becoming suddenly suspicious. Gimme the chocolate and let me out of here. Fifteen seconds cried the Grand High Witch. One of you crazy, will one of you crazy punks tell me what all of this is about, shouted Bruno. Ten seconds, shouted the Grand High Witch. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. We have, igni we have ignition. I could have sworn I heard an alarm clock ringing. I saw Bruno jump. He jumped as though something, as though someone had stuck a hat pin deep into his bottom, and he yelled, Ow! He jumped up so high that he landed on a small table up there on the stage, and he started hopping about on the top of the table, waving his arms and yelling his head off. Then suddenly he became silent. His whole body stiffened. The alarm clock has gone off, shrieked the Grand High Witch. The mouse maker is beginning to work. She started hopping about on the platform and clapping her gloved hands together, and then she shouted, This smelly brat, this filthy scum, this horrid little loose, will become very soon a lovely little mouse. Bruno was getting smaller by the second. I could see him shrieking. Now his clothes seemed to be disappearing, and brown fur was growing all over his body. 
Suddenly, he had a tail. And then he had whiskers. Now he had four feet. It was all happening so quickly. It was a matter of seconds only. And all at once, he wasn't there anymore. A small brown mouse was running around on the tabletop. Bravo! yelled the audience. She's done it. It works. It's fantastic. It's colossal. It's the greatest yet. You are a miracle, oh brainy one. They were all standing up and clapping and cheering, and the Grand High Witch produced a mouse trap from the folds of her dress and started to set it. Oh no, I thought. I don't want to see this. Bruno Jenkins may have been a bit of a stinker, but I'm dashed if I want to watch him having his head chopped off. Where is he? snapped the Grand High Witch, perching the platform. Where has that mouse gone to? She couldn't find him. Clever Bruno must have jumped off down jumped down off the table and scampered to some corner, or even down a small hole. Thank heavens for that. It matters not, shouted the Grand High Witch. Silence and sit down. All right, that's the end of your chapter. What do you think will happen next?